Hello, everyone, and welcome back. My name is Mr. Kovalt, and in this video, I'm going to go, be going over the phases of matter. So let's get into this. So the phases of matter are pretty familiar to all of us, solid, liquid, and gas. But we're going to look at it from a molecular atomic point of view. What's going on with the particles themselves in those particular phases? And so when we talk about a solid, liquid, or gas, we're really talking about a substance with certain uh, properties that really define what a solid is, what a liquid is, or what a gas is. So let's get into this. So solid, let's start with solid. So solid is where you have the particles are closely packed together. So what are the what is a solid? A solid is a substance that has uh, a definite shape to it, a definite volume. Right. Definite means that it doesn't change. Right. So if it has a definite shape, the shape doesn't change. It's always the same shape. Uh, the other thing is it has a definite volume. The volume doesn't change. Always the same vo uh, volume. So if you put it into a different container, it's going to have the same volume. Right. So it's going to it's not going to change volume just because you put it into a different container. Same thing with the shape. And it's not compressible. Uh, you're not going to be able to squeeze the particles closer together. Why? Why do these characteristics define what a solid is? Well, it's because if we look at it in the atomic view or molecular view, we can see that the particles are very closely packed together. So they're so closely packed together that you can't really get them any closer. So that's why it's not compressible. You can't squeeze it to make it smaller. Uh, same thing with the particles. They're in a fixed position. The particles cannot move from their position. They can vibrate. So um, they're vibrating in their position, but that's really all they're doing. They can't really move out of the position. They don't have locomotion, meaning motion from place to place or translational motion, as it's also called. Right. They don't have rotational motion, so they can't really rotate in place. So they're really stuck in place because they're so closely packed. This leads to these characteristics. So that's why solids have a definite shape, a definite volume, and they're not compressible. Well, what about liquids? Well, liquids are defined by the fact that they, again, don't have a definite shape, right? as opposed to having a definite shape here, the shape can change. Liquids can change shape, uh, but they do have a definite volume. So the volume stays the same, right? So in this case, I could take uh, uh, some water. I can transfer it from a graduated cylinder, a long graduated cylinder, and then I can pour that into a beaker, which is kind of short and fat. And so I can put it into one container from another, and depending on the shape of the container, the liquid or the water in this case, in my example, uh, is going to take the shape of whatever the container is. So it has no fixed, no definite shape. However, the volume is not going to change regardless of what container I put it in, right? So whether it's a 50 milliliter uh, graduated cylinder or a 50 milliliter beaker, it's still going to be whatever volume the water is. If it's 20 milliliters in one, it's going to be 20 milliliters in the other. So why does it have these characteristics? So going to the particle, the atomic view, the molecular view here, we can see that the particles are still closely packed together, right? However, they have much more freedom to move. And here, the only motion that's here is, is vibrational motion. They can vibrate. Here, not only can they vibrate, but they can move from place to place. That's locomotion or translational motion. So they can move around um, and they can also rotate. So they have rotational motion. So they have more freedom of movement here than over here. This allows them to have different properties. So liquids, therefore, are not going to have a fixed position. If they don't have a fixed position, that means they can change shape right? They can move around. So this is a, allows for a, a change in shape and therefore no definite shape of liquids. Um, I already mentioned locomotion, rotational motion. And again, they did, they have a definite volume. Why? Because they're still closely packed together. They're, they're not really moving away from each other. They're really staying very close 
completely packed together, but they are able to move past each other. And so therefore, um, they're not going to be compressible as well because the particles are still really close together that practically speaking, it's not really going to be compressible. You're not really going to compress a liquid all that much, if at all. Okay. Um, so that's liquids. And then finally, the gas phase. What is, what are gases? Um, well, gases are defined by the fact that they don't have a definite shape, right? So this, the shape of gas can change. And then in addition, they don't have a definite volume. So as we know, or we have experienced that you can fit a gas into any container. I can take all of the air out of this room that I'm in and fit it into a small thermos, right? A smaller container. Why is that possible? <clears throat> it's because for gases, the particles are so very far apart that you can actually uh, push them closer together. There's a whole lot of space between the particles. So this allows for them to be compressible. You can squeeze them closer together. You can uh, draw them out. So this allows for a gas to fit into really any, any container within, within reason, of course. So I can take all the air in the room and I can shove it into a small uh, bottle if I wanted to, right? Um, <clears throat> so the particles are not closely packed together, so they can be squeezed closer together. Therefore, they're compressible. Um, there's no fixed position, just like in the water or the liquid, I should say. Uh, but here we have a complete freedom of motion. Here, the, they, the motion is there, but they stay close together. Here, the motion is completely free. They are free to move away from each other, bounce around, move away, move close. Um, they have total freedom of motion here. So this is what this is what allows for gases to have these particular characteristics. And so this is what defines a gas as a gas. And so that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you understand or define solids, liquids and gases based on our understanding of what is happening at the molecular or atomic level. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoy this video, then please like, share, uh, and, and, and hit that like button. Share the video with your friends. Also, make sure you uh, subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell. And when you do, make sure you uh, hit the all so you can be notified by all the videos I put out. And finally, put a comment down below in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Ask me questions. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.